This tank chat is going to be about this vehicle, the M548, a tracked load carrying vehicle from the 1960s and a vehicle that's actually become very important to the tank museum and I'll talk about that later. Please remember to like, subscribe or click the little notification bell if you don't want to miss out on these videos and I'd just like to say thank you to all our patrons for making this possible. Please join them if you can. The project starts back in the 1950s in the American military. They're looking at a project that's going to build a family of vehicles that ends up being as we know it today, the M113 armoured personnel carrier. Uh, an aluminium based uh, armoured troop carrier is what the American military are really looking for. But because of the uh, utility of the drivetrain, it ends up being used as a basis for a number of other vehicles as well, including this one. This one starts as a request from the American Signal Corps who wants some sort of tracked vehicle to carry uh, a threat radar, uh, an artillery threat radar system on the back. In other words, a radar that's actually trying to pick up incoming enemy artillery shells. Um, and they ask for this as part of that program and it ultimately leads to what becomes the XM548, the vehicle here. Ironically, of course, the American Signal Corps don't actually end up putting that radar system on this vehicle. But as a test bed, they've got three of them ready by late 1964 and they see the utility for a number of other areas of the American military. So just having a track flatbed that can take things like ammunition forward for the M109, the M110 self-propelled artillery, that type of thing, they're immediately realizing, actually, we do have a requirement here for a vehicle that the M548 fits, as it were. So with this vehicle, they start production in 1966. Um, it goes out to the Vietnam War. It becomes one of those vehicles that's always there in the background, as it were, because it's a very useful utilitarian load carrier. It's got a low ground pressure, which means it can travel across quite a bit of different types of terrain. It's got a five tonne payload, so you can get quite a bit of kit in the back and immediately the Americans, when it goes into service, they start adapting it. And it's one of these vehicles that's come out in quite a number of configurations uh, other than just that basic load carrier that we're looking at here. Although even this one we've adapted to a certain degree as well. Um, the idea as well, so what you've got here, aluminium, it's not armoured as such, um, aluminium to keep the weight down, and when they're designing it, it's got a breakdown capacity. You can take that front cab off, you can take the doors off so that it'll fit in a Hercules C-130. The hoops framed on the back with a vinyl cover, that all comes off as well. You can reconfigure the back deck just considering what you're going to be carrying. You can change the floor level so that you can have seats in there if you're using it as a troop carrier. Um, in Vietnam, they put in uh, water bowsers, they put in fuel tanks in the back, and they were used sometimes to support flame-throwing versions of the M113, so it would carry the flame fuel in there uh, for reloading. Some of those, immediately, they start putting armour protection on the side, because obviously you don't want your fuel to go up in, in flames that easily. Um, in that cab, you've got a driver's position and the space for up to three other crew members to go along there. And they also, on a number of them, they put what's called the M66 mount on, this big ring mount. And you can see here we've got a 50 caliber Browning machine gun fitted there. So it's a bit of crew protection um, when they put something like that on. Or other vehicles had 762 uh, machine guns put on them as well. Um, that idea of the utility, this actually becomes an amphibious vehicle as well. So from the point of view with very little in the way of preparation, um, it's got a sealed door at the back so that water doesn't come in. It will float um, naturally on it. It's got a sort of, in a sense, it's got a boat shaped hull as well. Um, the tracks alone, just going through the water, will propel it forward. Um, again, it's fine for inland waterways, small little uh, you know, river crossings or whatever. You wouldn't go on the open sea with it. You'd be swamped very quickly from that side of it. Drivetrain, um, it's got uh, a Detroit diesel engine in there, what they call the CV or the 6V53 Detroit diesel, pumping out early models about 205 horsepowers, 
by the A3 version of this, they've got a newer type of engine, diesel again in there, that's coming out with about 175 horsepower engine. Um, that drivetrain goes to the front drive sprocket that you can see here. It's got along the side five double road wheels, um, and they, the first, second, and the last road wheel has a shock absorber on it. The rest of them don't. Um, but again, rubber track pads, again, mainly for um, not ripping up roads, etc but a very low ground pressure, which meant again, you can get across with your supplies to areas that other wheeled vehicles would not be able to get to. This vehicle ends up being used by the British Army. The British Army, we put a high ab crane on the backs of some of them. They call it FAST, which basically is an abbreviation, Forward Area Support Team. Um, and they are actually following the Rapier air defence systems and they carry spare Rapier missile containers, which they can offload that way. Um, another variant, the M667, is the Lance missile carrier. So they pretty much have an open back. It looks very tub-like and that's where the Lance missile was carried. And lots of countries, over a dozen countries, take this into service. They end up with their own variations. The Germans have a distribution system put on the back. Um, the Norwegians end up creating one that becomes a recovery vehicle. So each country tends to do slight adaptions uh, or specializations of the basic M548. And Britain as well, we end up using that M548 chassis for the actual tracked rapier vehicle, which end up, we'll look in a different tank jack at that vehicle, but ends up looking very, very different from that point of view. Um, you can go out on the road about 30, 38 miles an hour in this. Um, it's got a reasonably good range, about 300 miles all around the place that way. So again, um, that Detroit diesel, very, you know, they always call it like bulletproof engine. It's very reliable that way. And basically each model, so the A1 version of the M548, what it's got is improvements that happen on the M113, its kind of parent vehicle. If the engine's improved on that or better gearing, etc., that tends to move on to the next version of the M548 as well. The one difference between that sort of uh, is, is, is the, the actual drivetrain bit on this vehicle to the actual M113 um, suspension torsion bar suspension, these are slightly thicker diameter torsion bars on the M548 because of that load carrying issue it's got there. Um, it, it will get more pressure on it on that suspension system than the M113 will. Um, so that family of vehicles has been in use around the world since the 1960s. When the British Army got rid of some, the Tank Museum took some of them here. And why this has become a really important vehicle for the Tank Museum is some of you have visited here, you've probably seen it driving around our track. We ended up converting some of these into a rides vehicle, initially putting things like bus seats in the back. Now they've actually got strap-in coach seats that we've put down there. Um, and again, so every winter, this vehicle has just gone through. It's basically, it's, it's heavily serviced and it's probably the vehicles, actually the M5 fleet they do more mileage here than anything else in the tank museum fleet um, and they are soldiering on literally because again we've been looking out over time keeping them going and we ended up being very kindly given half a dozen of these by the Canadian Defence Forces when they went out of service we were able to take them over here on the Battis boat get them here to the tank museum um, so we have quite a number of these on site which means hopefully all being well you'll be able to come here in the future and still normally during the summer be able to have a ride in our M548. So for us here at the Tank Museum, really important vehicle. Not always one of those vehicles, a track load carrier that gets all the attention. But again, as we always say, you know, that logistics side, absolutely essential. Your tanks will not go anywhere. Your guns will not fire anything unless there's vehicles like that, the M548 that will resupply you.